Hi, fourth grade, and welcome back to Math with Mr. G. Today we're starting our new topic for the next two days. Um, this is, in a way, a continuation of our, um, you know, prime numbers, our multiples, um, our factoring, everything like that, because when we look at, um, you know, number patterns like we are today, it's very, very tightly related to that and a continuation of that, because things like prime and composite factors and multiples are all patterns in their own way and can the understanding of those foundations can help you understand how numbers work in patterns themselves. So for the next two days, we're going to look at how numbers can be used in patterns with addition and subtraction, um, as well as in shapes and other forms as well. And this is really just to give you a good sense of numbers and how numbers can be moved, which is always our goal, um, especially through fourth grade content as we head towards more difficult things like word problems. Because when you start dealing with word problems, understanding how numbers can be moved and interpreted really helps you understand um, the word problems themselves, which are oftentimes real-world examples. So without further ado, let's get into it with our objective and then our first couple examples. So our standard is 40A C5, and our objective is to generate a number or shape pattern that follows a given rule. Identify apparent features of that pattern that were not explicit in the rule itself. So let's look at this. So the very first one, I have these boxes and you can see that I'm going like this in this direction and my rule is to add six. So this is a pretty simple straightforward one but it's helped to give us a good basis of understanding how these rules can be used. So from six I'm going to add six here. So six plus six is twelve and to double check this rule is correct I'm going to add six to twelve and see if that fits with eighteen. This is a big part of checking these patterns these rules is to make sure the information that's already given you um, is correct because that will help you establish how correct you are with it because it'll help you interpret. There's going to be some later on where they're only going to give you a very little amount of information with numbers filled in and perhaps not giving you the rule at all and you have to find it on your own. And you're really going to have to rely on the numbers that are already given to you to establish what that rule is. So from 18 we're going to add another 6 which is 24 and then another 6 to that which is 30. Great. Okay, let's scroll down and look at the next one. So this rule, like you might have guessed here, like I said before, is blank. There's no rule written in there. We have to figure out what it is. So we're going from 9 to 18, and then we're going from blank to 36. So like I said in the intro to this, um, working on factors, prime and composite, and multiples is going to give us a good idea how to work with this, because I'm already noticing that these are multiples of 9. So if I were to even just build myself a 9 tree, I bet I could very quickly figure out or check that that is in fact a rule for this. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we have 9, 18, 27, 36, and then 45. So yeah, this does seem to be following this multiples pattern because we have a 9, an 18, and a 36 in this. So we're adding 9 to each one. So our rule is going to be to add 9. So using even just our, our multiples here, the next number would be 27, and then 45. And I use my multiple sheet because the tree gives us a really good idea of what the numbers are going to come next while having to do the repeated addition. Um, but always remember that multiplication and multiples are just repeated addition without having to do the steps of addition. So let's look at this one. This one's a lot more complex. So they give us the rule here and here, and then we have to fill in these blanks, and there's a lot more blanks this time. <clears throat> Excuse me. So every time we move this way, we're actually subtracting 9. So whatever this is here, this is 9 less than it. So what's interesting about this one is that you actually have to work backwards. So if I want to go this way, I actually have to add 9. So what's 71 plus 9? Well, it's 80. So the rule also helps you understand that you have to go back this way, but... The rule also tells us that, you know, if this is the function to go this way, what to do that. But if you have to fill in the blanks this way, you can add 9 to it. So, let's go from there. 71 minus 9 
is, let's see, we'll do it the long way, 71 minus 9. We won't subtract this way for all of them just for the sake of time, um, but on your own you're probably going to want to. 6, 11, 2, and 6. So 71 minus 9 is 62. After that is going to be 53. After that is going to be 44, then 35, and then 26. Great. Okay, let's do the next one. So same thing with this one. So if I know I'm subtracting 3 as I go this way, I need to add 3 if I have to go backwards and find those. So if I add 3 to 16 to find this one, I'm going to get 19. If I add another 3, it's going to be 22. And now we can start filling in the rest with following the flow. 16 minus 3 is 13. 10 minus 3 is 7. 7 minus 3 is 4. Cake. Okay. Okay, as always, if you have followed this long to the video, I'm going to go over one of the assessment questions um, to help you and in a way to reward you as well. So identify the operation performed on X, so this is X, to get Y. So this is a rule chart. It's a function, and it helps you understand that whatever happens here then determines what happens here. So it's just like what we were doing up top, but just formulated differently. Um, so I'm actually still going this way, but whatever I do here contributes to this. So as I move down, it's terrible arrows, but you get the point. As I move down, I'm gonna have to then bring it down like this. So as I go over, I go down. So I went from four to eight. Well, I know four can be multiplied by two to eight. I know I can add four to get eight from four. But then we jump plus one to get five. And then I'm at 10. Well, I know I can add 5 to get 10, but I know I can also multiply by 2 to get 10. So, so far, this one and this one, the common pattern here is the multiply by 2. Let's see the next one. So I'm adding 1 to x, and then I'm multiplying it by 2 to get y. Yeah, 6 times 2 is 12. Add another 1. 6 plus 1 is 7. Multiply it times 2 is 14. Okay. So there's, there's two parts to this rule. So the rule is... we're going to multiply x by 2, which equals y. And they simple it here and simplify it for you that it's just to multiply by 2. Pretty simple, but patterns and rules are one of the more confusing parts to start with because it's just not flat out addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. Like it doesn't, it isn't very clear. There aren't necessarily as many clue words. Like there's a certain amount of having to kind of figure it out on your own. So this is one of those ones where you want to take your time with it and play with it and treat it like it's a game to make it more fun for yourself. Um, we'll be working on this today as well as tomorrow. So we'll have a good feel for it by the end of tomorrow. As always, I look forward to your work and I'll see you guys tomorrow.